You can't do it. You cannot lie to God. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Rod Him. I'm Janice. This is Quick Study Television. It is a television program taking you through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And I am delighted you decided to join us. If you stay there for the next 30 minutes, we're going to be talking about this. In fact, on today's program, that's exactly what we're talking about. Lying to the Holy Spirit is impossible. But you know, many try and it's amazing. And so as we look at this and as we consider God and consider all this, we need to remember we can't do that. We'll talk about that coming up in just a moment. Corey, what are you talking about today? Today, it is all about the Apostle Peter. The Apostle Peter. Mm -hmm. Why didn't I think of that? That is great, Corey. Now, you studied and you explored this. Yes. What did you study? I'm going to take a look at Acts chapter 5, verses 3 and 4, and specifically Peter's question to Ananias. We're going to analyze that just a wee bit. Really? That's interesting because mm -hmm. Peter, I mean, that question, uh, actually as a result of that question, the men waited to carry his body out. Very interesting. Okay, all of this and more is coming your way. Get your Bible guide out and your Bible out because it's time to study. If it weren't for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there wouldn't even be a New Testament book of Acts or any of the other books of the New Testament for that matter. Let's take a look at this central claim of Christianity. As an event that would shake the entire world, influencing the tide of history so continuously, no incident can stand against the resurrection of Jesus Christ. According to the Gospel of Matthew, people began right away trying to explain the miraculous. The Pharisees paid Roman guards to say Jesus' body had been stolen from his sealed tomb, without the guards seeing or following. Though this bribed invention didn't do much to stop the spread of Christianity, archaeology has revealed that it likely influenced the ear of the Emperor of Rome known since 1878 an intriguing artifact named the Nazareth inscription may shed light on the official Roman response to Jesus' resurrection. As its name suggests, it came from the city of Nazareth and is strongly believed to be an authentic inscription from the first century. The inscription opens as an abridged version of an official decree from Rome. It's concerned with the stealing of entombed bodies. What makes this unusual is that this isn't grave robbing. No valuables are being taken, only bodies. It also appears that this decree is aimed specifically at Jewish and Christian Jewish lifestyle who commonly use the family tomb. The inscription also links the offense of stealing a body with an evil plan, a deviously thought out calculated offense. And the punishment is very severe, brought before a religious tribunal, and if found guilty, capital punishment. This inscription, dated to before AD 70, fits the time frame, the content, and even the culture that was reeling in the aftermath of Jesus' resurrection. It was a dangerous belief, replacing the king of Rome with the king of heaven in a time period of revolt. It appears that Rome's response was to place a decree in the very spot this leader was said to have come from, a place that even identified these Christians called Nazarenes. The stone was placed in Nazareth. Even from a historian's point of view, everyone has to admit that something happened here. Something unusual happened, something out of the norm. The man Jesus Christ was not just buried and that was that. Something very unusual happened. And we can take a look at the lives of the, the 12 or the 11 after Judas, the 11 disciples of Jesus Christ, how that drastically changed their lives to the point that they were willing to die for their beliefs. Now, many use the argument that there are many religious fanatics who are willing to die for their beliefs. And while that is true, there is a fundamental difference between those who will die based on a promise of them receiving something in the afterlife versus the 11 disciples who were willing to die based off of something that they saw. 
they were willing to die because they believed that they saw the resurrected Jesus Christ. Now, if that was just a lie, why would they, through torture, still hold to that? So they weren't dying for a promise of something in heaven or the afterlife. They were dying because they refused to to say that what they witnessed was a lie. Something happened that those 11 men all witnessed. Great fear comes to a society when someone is punished for something they did. This is especially true when it is understood that anyone, anyone can easily do the same thing with a simple lie. Ananias and Sapphira try to lie to the Holy Spirit. Now, you, you can't lie to God, but sometimes through ignorance, we try. God already knows everything about us and why we believe the way we do. So when Ananias tries to lie to God, he is confronted about his transgression and by the apostle Peter. Now it's important to understand that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We must never lie to the Lord, our God. Acts 5, verses 1 through 11. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession. And he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things, and the young men arose and wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, Yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. You know, it's amazing today how we learn things that happen in the scripture that are very much close to what we do today. And a lot of people say, well, the scripture, I mean, that's an old book. You can throw that. No, it's not. It makes sense today. And this guy, Ananias and Sapphira, well, his husband, the husband and wife, I mean, they, they tried to lie to God. They tried to lie to the Holy Spirit. And there's a lot of people who do that sort of thing today. You can't lie to God. God knows everything. It's like Adam. When Adam sinned, they tried to hide behind a bush. Why? God can see everywhere and everything. Because they were darkened, sin darkened their knowledge of who God truly is. And so today, as we focus on this, we need to consider a few things. First of all, I need to tell you that there are four points in this particular uh, situation today, and we have different items on today's reading in the Bible guide. Write for your Bible guide and get it today, and we'll send it to you. And also, I need to tell you that wisdom in the choice, wisdom in the choice. Now, when you choose and however you choose, you can have wisdom or foolishness. 
but wisdom is important to study. Our reading is Acts chapter 5 through 8. If you continue reading that, you will join us in reading through the Bible in one year. Our focus is on Acts chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. And as we look at this and read it, we need to understand God is speaking to us, so we go to it. Here it is, Acts chapter 5, verses 1 to 4. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back a part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and they brought a certain part, and they laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, it was not your own? Come on. And after it was sold, was it not your own? And in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men. You have lied to God. Now, this is important. And as we look at this, we understand lying to the Holy Spirit is impossible. But many try. We must be honest with the Lord. Now, I know this is hard for some people. But the truth is, I believe the Bible. And the Bible is real. The 66 books written by 40 authors over thousands of years, all with the same theme. The theme is Jesus Christ. And I need to tell you, I need to let you know, I need to help you understand and me understand that you cannot lie to God. You can try to lie and your human soul tries to say, well, just say this or just say that. God knows. And so when you come to the Lord and you begin to offer your life to him and you say it and you speak it, Lord, forgive me of my sin, God sees every single sin. You can't see every single sin, but God sees it. And when you say, Lord, I messed up on that, forgive me. He knows that. And beloved, we cannot lie to God. And you can't lie to the Holy Spirit. God is the Holy Spirit. You can't do it. And so keep that in mind. When, when you're talking to people, when you're working with people, keep that in mind. And sometimes God knows before you do. All the time God knows before you do. It's very, very important. We go back to chapter 5, verse 5, and it says, Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon those who heard these things. And the young men arose, and they wrapped him up, and they carried him out, and they buried him. Now this is important so that you understand that Ananias, in hearing the truth, now in hearing the truth, breathed his last. And the men come and take his body. Now this is amazing because he tried to lie to the Holy Spirit, but you know what? The Holy Spirit spoke to Peter and Peter is like, you got to be kidding me. No. Peter tells him the truth and Ananias hears the truth. That's the last thing that Ananias ever heard. And I want to tell you something right now. That is important. This is judgment of God. This man was killed in the New Testament after Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again. That's something important that we need to realize. God's judgment is real, and it's true. And a lot of people, they make the wrong blame. They say, oh, the enemy's fighting me. The enemy. Actually, and sometimes the Lord is letting, you, is letting the enemy come in to test you, to get you straight, or to straighten out your path and correct you. And you need to remember that. You need to keep yourself solid and tied into the Bible. So important. We go on to the next passage, and it says in chapter 5, verse 7, Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. Peter gives her a chance to say so. And she said, Yes, for so much. Oh my goodness, why did she say that? And then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look at the feet of those who have buried your husband. And they're at the door, and they will carry you out. And then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead and carried her and buried her beside her husband. I want to tell you something. This is important. Lying to the Holy Spirit is wrong. No matter who you are, you can be, I don't care if you're the Pope, lying to the Holy Spirit is wrong. 
no matter who you are. Sapphira is tested and she fails. She breathes her last when she hears the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved, it doesn't matter who you are, how much money you have, how cute your personality is, or who you're connected to. That doesn't matter. When you lie to the Holy Spirit, you lie to God, you will be found out because God will take that and make it so that you understand what he's doing. Because God demands the truth. And if we're honest with the Lord where we can be, and when I say we can be because we don't know the future, but when we're honest with the Lord, he rewards us. Let us be true today and not lie. to look at the life of the disciple or apostle Peter after the history of the book of Acts was closed. So uh, early Christian history fills in the blanks of what happened to Peter. After his miraculous release from prison recorded in Acts chapter 12, specific details of apostle Peter's life are largely left out of the biblical narrative. Save having two epistles written by him to believers, we are left only with history and traditions that were passed along by the church and written down by church historians. A great compiler of these documents is the church leader and historian Eusebius, writing from Caesarea Maritima in the early 4th century AD. Eusebius lived through the brutal Christian persecutions of Emperor Diocletian and survived to see Emperor Constantine declare Christian tolerance. Eusebius was no stranger to pain and controversy, and it is from this context that he gathers the records of the lives and deaths of the apostles. According to his history, the Apostle Peter and his wife traveled much before arriving in what would be their final earthly destination, Rome. According to Eusebius, testified by other historians, Simon the Sorcerer, who stars in Acts chapter 8 in a conflict with Peter, had made a new living as a false teacher in Rome. Peter is credited with squelching these flames of evil before taking his place as the leader of the Church of Rome. This leadership must have been short-lived. In AD 64, Emperor Nero began an extermination of the Christians of Rome. In a brutal display of uncontrolled malice, Nero's personal gardens were used as display grounds for the bodies of executed Christians. Paul, as a citizen of Rome, was mercifully beheaded, but Peter, with many unknown believers, was crucified. Tradition holds that Peter's wife was executed before him, bound and thrown to wild animals. Peter's last words to his wife, being led to slaughter, are famed to have been a calling out of her name, followed by, remember the Lord. As we embark on this year's study of the New Testament of the Bible, we are excited to bring to you two new original products to help you deepen your understanding of these influential times. Our new DVD, Discover the World of the Bible, Episode 2, The New Testament, and our New Testament Timeline. Both of these tools have been fashioned to make a study of the New Testament more complete and accessible. The New Testament timeline keeps us on track in history as we study through the Gospels, even lining up popular Roman history with events in the New Testament. Our new DVD, Discover the World of the Bible, Episode 2, brings relevant historical archaeological evidences to establish the Gospels in and as history while explaining cultural truths that hold theological significance. We are pleased to be able to offer both of these products together for a donation of $30, or separately, our new DVD for a $25 donation or the New Testament timeline alone for a $10 donation. Timeline bundles are also available, so please call our offices for details. 
To get a hold of these new products, write, call, or order online today. Thank you for staying with us here on Quick Study Television as we go through the Bible in one year from Genesis to Revelation. This is the last day of the 11th month. Wow. That means, I know, it's, it's important. That means... Where has this year gone? It's gone fast. And uh, it's amazing. And uh, we have one more month, mm. 31 days in December after this. Lots of exciting <laughs> chapters. We're going to be fulfilling the rest of the scripture, all the New Testament in that time. And it is really interesting how we've designed it this year. It's been different than other years. And so anyway, I put it together and uh, next year we're going to do it again. And so pay attention because coming up this month, this coming month, December, uh, you're going to learn how to write for your quick study pocket guide for next year. You simply write to us, but that's another story. And some people might say, well, I've done it for a year, so I'm not going to do it again. You know, I have read the Bible. This is my 30th time through the Bible. And I have read the Bible 29 times. And every time I read through the Bible, I read through it that year. And this is my 30th year. Uh -huh. And it's more intense that's than right. it was the year before. That's right. And guess what? I'm finding out more things, and it's more intense now than it's ever been. Yeah. And so, uh, so we're I, still I, learning. I'm still learning, and I don't know how many times I'll just keep going through it. But I don't know how many times. But it's really interesting. And it's new pocket guides. New pocket guides. New brand, material. Uh, the guides are always new. Always new. Every year they're always new. And next year you're gonna, you'll see. You have the, some interesting uh, aim next year. It'll be fascinating. Anyway, um, I don't mean to be taking up the time here. That's okay. What, <laughs> what did you study for I, today? <laughs> I hope I can aim this correctly. Now, we're taking a look at Acts chapter 5, and I'll tell you, Rod, there's been a lot of misunderstanding and some offense taken by people when they first read this, because it is a little bit difficult to understand at first glance. It's confusing, and I want to just direct our attention. Ananias and Sapphira were a couple who were involved in the church in Acts, and they sold a possession. That's what the very first couple of verses say. Um, a man, Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, they sold a possession and they kept back part of, of what they brought in when they sold it. And they brought just this certain part and laid it at Peter's feet. Now, Peter said to them, this is verse three and four, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. So I want us to understand that the, the sin here was not that they didn't give the whole thing. Mm -mm. They sold their possession and they kept part of it back. Does that mean that we have to give everything? That wasn't the sin. What the sin was, was the deception of acting like they were bringing the entire offering of what they had sold. It was a deception, and it was also that they wanted praise yeah. from the apostle for what they were doing. And yeah. that's what's wrong. It's not that they didn't give everything. It was that they lied about what they were bringing. Yeah, they, they did, and, and I think that is the real key, what you've hit there, is they lied. And you can't lie to God. No, and, and you know, if, if I just want to take a little bit farther, it reminded me of what we read in Matthew 6, 1 to 4 about giving. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you've no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed... Do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you. You know, that's really important, and I really want to bring that, that you know, this Matthew 6 principle, mm -hmm. okay, which is tied into that, is so important because we, we, we have the ability to, to make money yes. to do this, but 
we can't. We choose not to do it that way. We have to allow God to work on your heart and work on our hearts. He loves a cheerful giver. He does, and that's just the way it is. And so a lot of people come to me from agencies and all over the place say, we know how you can get money. Well, I know, but we've got to be obedient to the scripture and allow the scripture to tell us how to do it. One of the greatest problems in the human drama is to lie about something and then find out the truth. In the real world of the Holy Spirit, that's impossible. We cannot lie to God. Many people don't realize this and they attempt to treat God like a divine mind who cannot hear their thoughts. God can both see and hear our thoughts. It is important to understand that the Lord loves us and gives us the honor of choice. We can choose to love Jesus Christ and give our lives to Him, or we can choose not to. Well, God is amazing. He's one God in three persons, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's important for you to understand because God sent His Son 2,000 years ago to, to die on a cross that was a Roman punishment, and He died. And then he rose from the dead and two angels pushed his stone away at the command of Christ. And I want you to know that God loves you today. And if you come to him, he'll save you. Pray and say, Jesus, be my Lord. I need you today.